everyone, welcome to the Oakler's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're doing something we've already done a few times on this channel, but I, I have a new tool in the shop and I wanna show you guys how to use it. Today, we are gonna be making, once again, the, my favorite thing to make, the continuous reversible coffee sleeve. So this pattern is so fun, it was self-drafted. There are lots of versions of this out there. You can see some coffee sleeve patterns where they have a button and an elastic and the Velcro. Uh, this one is a reversible, continuous one. So there is no button, there is no elastic, nothing like that, and it is completely reversible. Now, I just wanna make sure you guys know this size template pattern is specifically for the reusable Starbucks hot cups, okay? I have a whole tutorial going over how to reshape these for different size cups. I'll have it linked down below. I'll have it linked up here as well. But for today, the tool that we're discussing is to make continuous reversible coffee sleeves for the reusable Starbucks cups. Now you're gonna see these all over the place at Starbucks. Will it fit a Dunkin' cup? I don't know. Will it fit a local coffee shop cup? I don't know. You're gonna have to wait and see. You're gonna have to try it out. You can also customize your own. Don't worry about it. But after lots and lots and lots of requests, we did decide we were going to make an acrylic template for this project. It makes it a lot easier. This way you don't have to print anything out and then you know after a while the paper gets kind of torn or, or you trace it onto a piece of you know like cutting mat material and cut that out. This is this was make it a little bit easier for those of you who are gonna be making a lot of these. Now I know we're in the middle of summer and not everybody's thinking about hot coffee but fall will be here soon and if you make these to sell this is going to save you guys a lot of time. So these are the ones we're gonna have in the shop. You can see I have some that are not very see-through so if you're gonna be making coffee sleeves that are you know, solid colors or they don't have specific pattern placement, this one's gonna be your go-to. It's gonna be nice and easy to use. If you're using material that does have a specific design that you want it to have centered, or you have an embroidered piece of material where you did an embroidery design, you just wanna make sure it is perfectly centered, it's not gonna be caught in the seams, you're gonna to wanna to use the ones that are more on the clear side. Now, I'll try to show you guys this in a little bit more detail, but on this, we do have the pattern for the exterior piece of material and then we also have the lines for the fusible fleece with an easy way to trace it out. I'll show you how to use this. That's the point of today's video. It pretty much is to go hand in hand with this template. If you buy it, I want you to know exactly how to use it. So this should be a nice short sweet one. I am going to show you how to use the template, how to cut everything out, and then I'm also going to show you quickly how to piece it together once again. Um, if, if you don't need the template, you just want to know how to make it, go ahead and check out my other videos. I've gone over this a couple times. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. This is the most popular size, but we do have sizes for these that are bigger, that are for cold cups, things like that. Starting out, the acrylic templates are only for the this size right here, for the hot, reusable Starbucks cup. If you'd like to see acrylic templates for other sizes, for maybe the cold, reusable Starbucks cup, or maybe a grande, just let me know. Let me know what you guys are looking for. If you're making a lot of these, I'd love to be able to offer the templates for you guys. We have a laser cutter in-house, actually right there, right next to my camera, um, and we have been just chopping up everything. So if there's anything you need a template for that comes from the Oakle Roots Pattern Vault, uh, let me know and we'll get that for you. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, so for this, you're going to need, you only need one of these templates. I just have two to show you that. One is best for if you have pattern placement you really want centered. The other one is best for if you don't. But either one of these will work. Either one of these is great. So you're gonna want some cuts of fusible fleece that are bigger than your template. And you're gonna need two cuts of cotton woven. I do suggest cotton woven. You could get creative and start using vinyl here if you want, but the thicker the material, uh, the smaller this is gonna end up. So if you're using a vinyl and that's pretty thick, it might only come up this high because now you know the inside diameter is a little bit smaller than it is with quilt cotton. So quilt cotton has a nice stretch to it. I don't interface the quilt cotton with anything. I don't add any woven interfacing, anything like that. I like the quilt cotton to be nice and loosey-goosey and stretchable. So let's go through this first. So here I have one piece of material. And let's say for this one, I don't really care where the pattern is. I'm just going to lay this over here. Now, if you have this on a cutting mat, you definitely could. Just make sure you carefully hold this down. Grab your rotary cutter and whoop, go all the way around it just like that. That's the nice thing about these types of templates. You could just use your rotary cutter. You don't have to draw anything. Here, I'll do that for you guys first. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Now, it does not matter if you use this template on the right side or the wrong side. It, it does not matter. It is a mirrored um, shape, so it can be used on either side. 
So I'm just gonna go around this carefully. There we go. And I'm just carefully cutting. If I feel like, ooh, like over here I veered off a little bit, I just go it again. It does not have any sort of a sticky backing on it, so it's not slip proof. It can slip, so you have to be very careful. I don't know if you can tell, this is not a technique I usually use. I, I, am, a, I am a tracer. I like, I enjoy tracing it with a pen or a marker and then cutting it out with scissors. But I did want to show you that this is possible with these templates, which is why a lot of people do like acrylic templates. Okay, so there we go. So now we have one cut of material. Now let's say you have a piece of fabric that does have pattern placement. You wanna make sure you get the right thing. You wanna get your kitty cat in there. So let's just lay out this material here. So if you know you're gonna be making a lot of those, I would definitely go with more of a clear template. The clear template does have markings on it. I don't know if you can see, but there are markings here for the center. Let me see if I can put this here. Yeah, there we go. So there are center point markings here. This is the very center of the material. So that way you know, if as long as it's right here, your, your design's going to be centered. The markings along the side, we have these little cutouts going around and then they are connected by a drawn line. The little drawn line and the hole cutouts, that is the placement of the fusible fleece. That's also your seam allowance. So as long as your design is within these lines here, it will show up. If you have it going off the edge, it's gonna get eaten up in the seam allowance. So let's see, let's say I want this little kitty cat right here, nice and centered. I want all three of them in there, look at that. See, I can kind of align this up so I can get all my kitty cats exactly where I want them. There we go, that way all three of these should show up nicely. I'm gonna grab a marking tool. I always like to use friction pens when I'm marking. I'm gonna go around. All right, that looks great. And now I'm just gonna grab some scissors and I'm gonna cut this out. I know tracing and cutting by hand takes more time, but I just, I enjoy it. I, maybe it's just like a therapeutic part of the process that I like. Alrighty, I've got my two pieces of material all ready to go. That's gonna be adorable. And now I'm going to cut out my fusible fleece. So you're gonna grab a scrap piece of fusible fleece, just make sure it's bigger than the inside lines here. What I'm gonna do, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm going to, so I feel like you can see the cutouts on this one better. So I'm gonna show this to you. Either one of these is very easy to work with, but I wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing here. So you can see my fusible fleece is bigger than where my cutouts are. That's important. It doesn't have to be bigger than the whole template, just bigger than where the cutouts and the lines are connecting those cutouts. So now what I'm gonna do is once again, grab my friction marker and I'm just going to mark right in those slots, just like this. If you have a more fine marking tool here, it, it's okay. It doesn't matter if it's a little high, a little low, that's okay. I tried to make these cutouts nice and big so that pretty much any marking tool you're using should work in here. Obviously, if you're using a really large piece of chalk, it's probably not gonna work. But any sort of fabric pen marker should work. There we go. So now when I lift it up, you can see I have these corner marks and I have these straight edge marks. And what I'm gonna do now is just take my pattern and I'm gonna line up corner to corner. So I'm lining up the top edge from one corner to the other corner. And then I'm just going to follow along just like that. And it should match up with the marks you made as well. There we go, looks nice. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. I'm just taking the curved bottom edge and going from one corner to the other corner. And I'm not doing it like the corner of the template, one corner to the other, because it's not going to fit, right? The template is for the exterior piece. It's bigger than it needs to be. I'm just lining up any part of the edge on the bottom with the corners that I marked. There we go. And then I'm just going to trace right along that bottom edge. Alrighty, there we go. And now I'm gonna use the straight edge over here to line up again, corner to corner. and get my straight bit here. Same thing on the other side. Line up those corners right along the straight short edge here, just so you can connect them. And now that I have it all traced out, I'm going to just cut along my marked lines. All right, and there is my little fusible fleece cut out, which I will then be able to center on my material and put this all together. Now I have a whole tutorial going over exactly how to put it together, but I am going to quickly walk you through it once again because I know it'd be nice to have everything in one spot. So let's go ahead and do that. How many of you guys were losing it over the fact that I had this sitting over here and it wasn't covered? I know, it gives me too. I know, whenever I see other people sewing and they have the rotary cutter just sitting out like that and it's open, free to cut whatever, it, it makes me so nervous. 
just so you guys know, I, if I ever get cut or burned or anything like that, I will never show it on the channel. You don't ever have to worry that I'm gonna accidentally hurt myself. Don't worry. Um, but I do apologize because I, I do know that that can be kind of like nails on the chalkboard kind of thing seeing that. I do apologize. I normally keep it covered. I, okay, so we have all of our material here. I know these are wrinkled, so let's give them a little press. Be careful when you're pressing these pieces because they are not interfaced with any sort of a woven interfacing. They're not interfaced with anything to prevent them from stretching. So we don't want these to stretch. We want them to stay this size. So I'm gently ironing it, no steam. And do the other piece as well. Just a nice gentle iron. Okay, now I usually like to pick what I would consider the exterior piece. It's reversible, so either side of these can be exterior. Pick one side. I'm gonna pick this side because it has the fussy cutting of the little kitty cats on it. And I'm gonna take my fusible fleece and I'm going to center this over my design. Now, if you want, you can grab your template and put it over it just to make sure your fusible fleece is actually centered. It's not too far to one edge or too high or too low. There we go. And now I just kind of press it down like that, gently hold it and flip it over. It should stay together just fine. And now we need to press this from the front. Depending on your fusible fleece, this can be kind of a nightmare. Um, some fusible fleece, as it gets hot, it's going to kind of like, the glue's gonna pull in on itself and it's gonna get all wrinkly and warped looking. I find keeping your iron moving, don't just hold your iron in one spot with fusible fleece, you have to keep it moving, but don't push down and stretch, okay? Don't put a lot of force on this, just keep the iron moving, keep it hot. You can use steam, you don't always need to, especially on a small piece like this, you really don't need to use the steam. If you're adhering fusible fleece to a really big piece of material, I would use a lot of steam. But for this, heating it up should be fine. Just keep the iron moving around. Don't let it sit in one spot. There we go. So let's flip it over and check how it is. Oh yeah, that's good, that's good. All right, so now let's sew this together. The template is created with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, so we're going to be doing that. First, we're gonna take one piece and fold it right sides together, short edges together. You can use clips, you can use pins, you don't have to use anything, this is such a small piece, you can probably keep it together with your fingers, but I'll use a couple clips, right sides together, there we go. Just focus on the short ends, do the same thing with the other piece that does not have any interfacing on it. Right sides together. For these you might wanna use a 70-10 needle because it is such lightweight material. Uh, you could also use an 80-12, just be careful. What happens is the thicker the needle is, the bigger the number on the needle, uh, the, the more it's going to just shove the fabric down into your feed dogs rather than piercing through it. So we do want a, a thinner needle here. So now I'm just gonna sew along both of these short edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, once you have them sewn together, you're gonna flip one of them right side out. You can press open the seam allowance if you'd like. Let's go ahead and do that, that'll actually be good. Since I still have my iron out and it's hot, Let's press open the seam allowance. It's going to reduce the bulk, make it easier to sew together. So I'm just gently pressing the seam open. There we go, do this for both of them. All right, when you're looking at these, remember there is a top and a bottom, okay? There's not a left and a right, but there is a top and a bottom. So the top is like the bigger opening. If it's a fan, the top is woo, the fingers, right? So you're gonna wanna put these right sides together. So I'm gonna flip one, right side out, and I have the other one wrong side out, and I'm just gonna insert this one that's right side out inside, so they are right sides together. If you wanna match up these seams, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. It's totally up to you. I usually don't match up the seams. Um, I just don't think it really matters. But I'm sliding this in to get the raw edges to meet one another, and I'm focused on the top edge right now. Once I have it in there, I'm gonna grab my clips, I'm gonna clip right along the top edge. Remember both of my pieces of material are right sides together. All right, and now I'm going to stitch along the top edge only at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm pretty much using the inside here, the fusible fleece as my guide. So when I'm stitching, I stitch from the inside material and I'm just keeping my needle right next to that fusible fleece. If a 3 8 inch seam allowance is going to make me stitch on top of the fusible fleece, then I don't do that. I don't want to stitch over the fusible fleece, okay? So get your needle right next to it, but not on top of it. All right, now that you have the top stitched together, you're going to flip the units out and then tuck in the piece that does not have any fusible fleece on it. Go ahead and tuck that on the inside, just like this. 
And if you need to kind of pull down on it, go ahead and do that. Roll this top edge to get it nice and flat. You don't want one side peeking out more than the other. So I just roll it with my fingers. I kind of pull it to straighten it out and then roll the looser material that's on the inside down. There we go. And then I add a clip to hold it just like I want it. Okay, still only working on this top edge. Don't worry about the bottom edge yet. Let's go around and top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you can see I did flip this inside out when I was top stitching it. Since this is reversible, there isn't a right side and a wrong side, but since I have a feature fabric here, I did want my top stitching thread to go with that feature fabric. How cute are these little kitty cats? Okay, so the last part is closing up the bottom edge. What I like to do is I'm going to kind of tuck down my material that doesn't have the fusible fleece on it first, because I'm just gonna work on the material here that is connected to the fusible fleece. And what I do is I gently just wrap the material around the fusible fleece and add a clip all the way around. You just gently wrap it around, straighten it all out, add a clip. Okay, so you can see I have the exterior all wrapped around the fusible fleece. Now I'm gonna flip the whole unit inside out with the clips on the exterior, there we go. So now I'm looking at the piece of material that does not have the fusible fleece and it has raw edges. And what I do, the hardest part is getting it started. Once you get it started, it's very easy to go around. But you wanna take a section and fold it down, wrong sides together, so that it meets the edge of the other material that's already wrapped around the fusible fleece. We're trying to get these both folded down so their raw edges are tucked inside and they are the same spot. So you can see, as I just kind of roll this with my fingers, I'm getting it to match up with the other side. Getting it started is the hardest. Once you get it started, you can just kind of go around, rolling it down carefully, and then adding it into the clips. It is very important that it matches up with the other edge. If it's too low, when we top stitch this, it's not gonna get caught when it needs to be caught. So again, just carefully rolling a little bit up, rolling a little bit down. My fingers inside are kind of straightening out the section I'm working on. So as I roll it down, I'm pulling on it a little bit to straighten out the little you know one inch bit that I'm looking at. There we go. All right, there we go. All looks great, perfect. So now I'm gonna go back to the machine and I'm going to top stitch along the bottom edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All righty, all sewn together, let's slip it out. Oh, look at my little kitty cats, aren't they cute? So let's grab this cup here, put it on, there we go. As you put it on, it might be a little low. That's the nice thing, as you push it up, it will stretch a bit, which gives it a nice tight fit, which means when you're using this and it's in your car, it doesn't come off. We use them all the time, everybody does, we love them. We wash them in the washing machine with just a regular load of laundry, just whatever your, whatever your settings are for your regular load of colored laundry, that's what we put these in on, and we pull them out and they're great. They never really loosen up, they never fall off, they're always nice and tucked in. I mean, it's my favorite thing to make. So what do you guys think? I, I love these, I obviously, I love these. I love making these sleeves so much that we will be having quite a few of these for sale in the shop come fall. So if you are somebody who loves these sleeves, but you don't wanna make them yourself, you don't have a sewing machine, whatever, Shop Oakle Roots is going to have coffee sleeves in the fall because we love them that much. I love making them that much, and I have so much beautiful fabric that I think you guys would love to carry around with you when you're out and about. But specifically, the templates. I really hope this is helpful for you. I, I, I practice with these a lot to make sure they were helpful for me, and they are. So if you grab one of these templates, let me know. If we sell out, uh, we can only make so many at a time, so if we don't have any in stock, make sure you're on the mailing list and we will mail you out an email when we restock the templates. There's specific colors of templates you'd like to see, let me know. Um, I think these are gonna be really fun, especially if you love making these sleeves as much as I do. This is super, super handy. So I hope this is so helpful for you guys. If there's any other templates you'd like to see, let me know. Do you guys want a template for the reusable cold cups? So actually, I have one right here. <laughs> These are the Starbucks reusable cold cups. This is not going to fit on there. I mean, it kind of, well, it fits a little bit on the bottom. It's like a diaper. 
<laughs> but if you guys would like a template for this one and maybe have it a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, let me know. We can definitely add that to the shop. So I hope you guys are having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. <laughs>